Welcome to another episode of VM End to End, a show where we have a VM skeptic and a VM enthusiast get together and hash out all things VM related. Brian, thanks again for coming in and uh, spitting knowledge at me. I'm so excited about this one. Discs, just discs. Yeah, you would. I don't understand this. I've been trying to figure this out for three episodes now. What is it about discs that is so exciting for you? I think part of it for me is that, um, you know, I think almost all useful systems have to store their information somewhere, right? Like your system has mm. a memory and like you care about the data and you know, that most of the time that's on a disc somewhere or ends up on a disc in the end. Um, and so I think, you know, for me, it's where systems get real. Um, and okay. That's the big deal. I, I can see that it's a fundamental unit of computing. And, and so that's, what's exciting. Yep. And you know, on that unit, you know, we think of them as you know physical hard disks or maybe an SSD. Um, but let me turn this back on you. Like in the cloud and compute engine, what do you think a disk is? Okay, all right. Going back to the slice of a data center model, to me, a disk would be a bunch of pieces from real physical machines spread out over a data warehouse or a data center, pulled together and presented to me, the user, as one logical disk that I can work with and operate on. Exactly spot on uh, yes it, that is exactly it um you know and you know in fact you know some of the some of that so it's a network attached disk right and, you know and it speaks of a protocol and mm. even physical disks these days speak a packet protocol so sata is serial ata and they talk about the block so here's a mm. block of data or give me that block of data and you know ours speak a you know similar protocol but over the network uh, to a group of disks so I guess what is it that's exciting about that and especially the, the network attached part? Because like when, what I care about is performance. I care about backups and scalability. I care about reliability more so than a fundamental unit of computing. Where do these disks kind of sit in relation to those? Yeah. Um, okay. This is, a, this is a meaty question. So I, I, think, <laughs> I think actually let's talk about each of these uh, in, a, in, a, in a row. So um, performance to, to start. Um, I, I think performance is kind of okay. tricky. Like, what does it mean to be fast? Um, and I, I think there's actually two different parts of that for disks. Like one is kind of throughput, like in a bulk, how much data can you copy over a certain amount of time? And the other mm -hmm. is latency. So how quickly can you get a response back to a specific question? Um, right. And it, it feels like, a. uh, uh a physical disk is going to be faster than that because I don't have to communicate over a network. Like that seems like common sense to me. And I agree. It seems like common sense and it's true for one and not for the other. And it, it, it's kind of weird why that is. So um, as, as physical disks are getting faster over time, mm -hmm. um, the, sorry, as they're getting larger and faster, but the, they're getting larger faster than they're getting faster in that. So like there's more and more, <laughs> capacity on the disk and the 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 window mm -hmm. to read and write that is not getting as big as fast so if you're talking over the network to hundreds or thousands of disks you can actually get more overall throughput so um the throughput side is an area where we are actually faster than a single physical disk um but sometimes you know, there is a little extra step there so if you need the absolute lowest latency read uh you might need something faster mm -hmm. so we have a product local SSD to do that. And that's basically just literally attaching a very fast hard drive to a machine. Yep. It's a, it's a physical okay. SSD on the host um, that we are running your VM on. And so, okay. So that seems to me like uh, I come from video game programming. So is this something I would use for maybe an inventory management system? Something like I, I recall items in inventory often. Is that a good fit for this? It, it would seem like it. Um, but I think in this case, probably not. So the, the local SSDs are actually intended for temporary storage because they are mapped to this physical host. And, you know, we want our VMs to be long lived and, you know, able to move around. So there, there are cases where, you know, we can't have the data live as long as you might like on a local SSD. So they're best fit for things like caches or uh, data that can be regenerated by processing or, you know, transcoding workloads or things like that. Intermediate uh, calculations in math or vectors and whatnot. Okay. Absolutely. That, all right, that makes a lot of sense then. So then what, what does Google Compute or what does Compute Engine offer when it comes to different types of 
physical disc or different types of uh, PDs, persistent disc? Yeah. Um, I think the there are multiple different types, and I'm probably not going to go into all the details, but the, the basic mm-hmm. breakdown is an area that I think you didn't hit here uh, that I think does matter to everybody, and that's cost. Um, oh, that's a big one. Yeah. So um, it, it basically boils down to a price to performance ratio. You know, so like when you mm-hmm. have a workload that is really performance sensitive, um, there are versions of persistent disk that can can hit that and they tend to be a little more expensive. And if you've got a workload that mm-hmm. is, you know, mostly about storing information and you don't access it that often, you know, there are less expensive uh, modes of PD to do that. And that makes sense to me. Um, like if I was a small business owner, I might not need the speed and scale that, say, uh, a Google, a company like the size of Google would operate at. And so then sorry, to not get into... There, but oh, uh, but I, mm-hmm. I, like to that point, I think um, lots of workloads need both as well, or like systems need both. You've got a long-term storage and a, and a high-speed portion as well. Okay, that's actually a really good point. So then... Okay, talking about systems and, and like you said, like this in systems in the wild might need two types of disk. What about backing up these kind of systems that are in production? Uh, do these virtual network disks actually help with reliability or backing up data? A lot, absolutely. So, um, you know, it's this like you said, it's this logical collection of of blocks, right? So, mm-hmm. in many ways, I think it's like having most of a, a SAN a storage area network. So you get Mm -hmm. uh, most of the features you would want from that. And and by that, I mean, you can take a snapshot of a disk, which makes a point in time copy without slowing the disk down. So you can make backups of live systems uh, anytime you want. And the other thing you can do is you can take an existing disk and you can just make it larger even while it's connected to a machine. I feel like everybody's run out of disk space at some point. I have a laptop and it, it, uh, it's run out of space and there's nothing I can really do about it other than plugging in a, an extra hard drive. So that's that's a feature that makes a lot of sense to me. You said something earlier about um, snapshots and whatnot, though. And, and I'm curious, like, what is the what's exciting about that? Uh, how does that become usable in a, in a production system? So there's the straight up. Um, so there's the straight up backup use case, um, which I think is important. But then um, mm-hmm. one of the the big ways we kind of scale computers these days is there's vertical and there's horizontal, right? So, you know, vertical might be like making this bigger, like we talked about. And then horizontal is add more computers to the mix doing it. And so if you have a computer that's set up the way you want it to work, you can take an image, you know, a snapshot of that. And then you can make multiple copies that make multiple images of that, that are running on multiple machines and have them work as a group to, to do the work. Okay, that is actually really cool because you're going to get reliability and consistency there. You're not going to get human errors. Yep. I am a huge fan of that. Um, is there is there anything else there that you want to touch on? Uh, because like you said, you're going to get backups from this. You're going to be able to scale vertically and horizontally from this. I, I feel like those are some really big benefits to disk and why they're useful and even more useful than having a physical uh, non-cloud native disk. So what do we need to follow up with in the future? We said cost, you know, yep. I miss cost and that's really important. So let's definitely have an episode on cost. What else am I missing? I think a whole episode there makes sense. And then I think as you start, you know, with the scaling stuff, you get more moving parts, right? So you, you, it, you go horizontal, you'll have more computers, you'll have more disks. You, you start need to think about kind of networking patterns. And so it's useful to have some automation to set that up and configure it in a consistent way. Yeah, I'm, and I'm actually excited about that because I'm a big fan of automating as much as I can. I make mistakes. I don't want to. I don't want to risk it. Um, Brian, thanks again for just taking the time. I I gotta admit, slowly, ah, oh, you're winning me over because love it. There seems to be a lot of a, a lot of benefits. Um, thank you. Uh, that's all for us this episode. If you're watching this at home. Let me know anything that you think we missed talking about or anything that you thought was very cool. I'm getting one over right now. Are you with me or no? Let us know in the comments below.